G'day everyone, it's 2021 and here we are back again for another year of the Crowcast Weekend Wrap and a number of other things. Look, it's great to be back, uh, a few little late glitches, so Spreaker Audio is not working tonight, but I'll get the audio up um, for those who want to listen to it on demand later on. In the meantime, why don't we just hit the start button and get the show on the road. Here we are again. Welcome everyone to another edition of the Weekend Wrap. The first one for 21. The pre-season is ahead of us. We've had a bit of a hit out already and uh, joining me for this hit out is my cohorts Nikki and Maka. How are you going guys? Lady first. <laughs> so who goes first then? <laughs> well, I will <wouldn't. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got better manners than me. Uh, no. go, where you go? <laughs> no, I'm good. I was out at the women's game today, so a nice result there. God, it's good to have you guys back. <laughs> <laughs> you no. missed this chaos, haven't you? Oh, shit, yes, have yeah. I ever. Uh, you know, I, I watched the game, Nikki. Great game. Um, no, I'm fine. And uh, the trouble with the missus not quite well, but... Uh, She's had a couple of little operations and she'll be fine. And uh, yeah, we're, as I said, said before, I'll be here and I, we're tough people. We'll get through. Yeah. And uh, look, I don't mind. I'm sure you don't mind us saying, Mac, that uh, we wish uh, Mrs. Mac all the very best in her recovery. And uh, we wish you, wish you all strength as well. So uh, not only myself and Nikki, but I'm sure everyone who is a fan of the Crowcast and listens in. So. Uh, Chin up, mate. Everything will be good. Yep, thanks, mate. And and we will miss her doing the dishes in the background. Oh, sure. She won't. Sometime down the track, she won't fun. Um, <laughs> mate. <laughs> now, look, thanks to everyone who's joined us for this first live stream. Uh, we've obviously got Discord going. We've got the chat going on YouTube as well. If you want to uh, listen to us, uh, uh, chat to us while you're listening, uh, go ahead and join us on Discord. Um, you can either... Uh, log in if you're on discord or you can actually access discord from our website as well so just go to the live chat page on our website and uh, you'll be able to follow your nose there and get onto discord without even having an account well guys <laughs> we've got a big show tonight we've got uh, some aflw stuff to talk about we've got some pre-season trials to talk about We've got um, a fantastic player interview uh, coming up a little later. Harry Schoenberg, who I had the pleasure of talking to on Friday. Great lad. Um, so mm. it's a big first up show. And uh, Nick, I reckon we might just start with you uh, without any scripting whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when, when we have scripts, it never goes well. Never works. Never works. Uh, tell us, let's, let's talk briefly, briefly about the AFLW. Well, we won, so that's good. Yes, um, we did. Better than our last home game we had. Yeah. Yes, um, <laughs> uh, yes I, I was yelling at Clarky for a lot of that game. Um, and then, funny enough, when he actually went back to our structures and are not trying to just stop one player on Fremantle's side, we actually came back into the game. Yeah, right. funny about that. Coach's fault. Um, Two-time so premiership coach last... can't coach. Is that is that what you're telling me? Yeah, but he stuffed up. Um, and he's learnt from that. And we saw that against Brisbane. And we mm. saw that definitely uh, today against the Saints, who are similar to the style in, in Frio in that they like that fast break. Um, we really, really stopped them. And that the pressure was immense. It was great to see, particularly in the forward line. Um, <laughs> yes, as Vardy Magic said, spray FLW. <laughs> Shots don't go all over the shop. But I have to say, Tia Charlton's that little snap goal that she kicked, the vision does not do it justice of how absolutely fucking brilliant 
that goal was. Um, she was actually very close to the boundary line and she just put it on the boot and it curled spectacularly. Um, and this is something that we know she's got the talent to do. That wasn't a fluke. This kid, she's got some very nice talent to burn. So I kind of like the structures that he's he's pushing up with what he's done with Randall pushing her forward just to, to help that forward line as well because it's quite young. Um, he pushed her down the back in the second half just to so we could hold up St Kilda and we did very well for Majosa. So I think, what is it, they only had, oh, I'm trying to think, I think it was like 10 entries into their forward line. Um, but we need to be able to get better at capitalising um, on on us getting it into our forward line so many times. We, we lead the league. In, in getting the ball in. We just need to be a bit more damaging. Quite right, right Nicky. Yeah. And, but, you on. know, the, the big four, um, which is uh, uh, the skipper, um, trying to think of now, Phillips, um, Hatchard, and uh, the winger. Uh, Marinoff? Marinoff. Yeah. The, I mean, they, they when, when they four fire, the club really fires, when the team really fires. And I'll tell you who, who played very, very well this year. In a new role, which is Jones, she has been very I think they've sort of she's sort of been like a loose player in defence or something. She keeps bobbing up all over the yeah. place. And, uh, she's on the wing. Is she playing wing? Is she? Yeah, she's she, playing wing. She plays wing, and then every so often she'll go into the middle. But predominantly, yeah. she's playing on wing, and um, Stevie Lee's on the other when the, the those two are off and on at the same time. Um, and then we still throw in like Mules and um, Hannah Button. Um, on the on the wing as well as as the rotations for those two, we've got Denny Van Hagen, who is also um, a really good winger for us. She's due back next week. I'm not sure whether she'll be picked because it's her first game eligible, but we've got some nice depth going on. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah as I said, very impressed with Jones. I always saw her as a bit of a weak squid, and uh, since she's been playing a new role, she's been quite dynamic. I think. Um, the other thing too I've got to mention is that the, the uniform clash. I cannot believe that somehow they allowed two play two teams to run out looking almost bloody identical. And <laughs> you know, it was very must have been very hard even at the game to, to pick out. Who's oh, I, I said in the chat in the first minute. If you actually go back and watch it, two Saints players. One of them actually starts to tackle a Saints player, um, <laughs> and then she stopped. And there was a number of times that there were passes or handballs directly, and it was the direct result of this. Now, the problem, I think, is that on the original schedule, I'm trying to remember who it was, but St Kilda were not scheduled to play us in Indigenous round. So their Guernsey was going to be up against another team which had a darker Guernsey. But because of COVID and... Well, they can't just bloody come up with... And it being made on the fly, I think this is what's happened. Yeah. But it was... they, they probably should have actually said to St Kilda, look, don't wear your Indigenous Guernsey. Yeah. Wear, oh, wear it next week. Out. Yeah. The blame is all ours. They wore their away Guernsey. Yep, no, I agree No, they wore with their that Indigenous one. one. Anyway, who cares? Um, yeah. We won. I reckon the Fremantle game, I reckon Matty Clark might have been just trying a few things out, so I wouldn't worry yeah. too much about that because uh, it's uh, probably a grand was. final he replay. Was- and uh, remember and the rules, very... Nikki. We don't talk over each other. <laughs> Sorry, I heard a pause. It's, it's that delay. I apologise. Yeah, turn your voice, uh, your VPN off. Um, um, it's not right. on. So we're sitting what fourth? I think on the table. Um, yeah, we're sitting fourth. Collingwood's on top, but Collingwood hasn't played Brisbane or Frio or us. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's definitely it is Brisbane, Frio, and us are the the three real mainstays. Um, just PJ Crows on the chat. Um, get stuffed. <laughs> <Yeah. Technical difference. laughs> uh, we just wanted to make you all feel at home and make, you know, knowing that you're at the right place. Anyway, so uh, the AFLW season is looking good. Um, let's move forward now and talk a little bit about the um pre-season for the Crows, but I reckon before we do that, just to shut everyone up because they're just carrying on, <laughs> you're giving us shit all the time, so <laughs> why, don't we, uh, why don't we just go ahead and play our interview with Harry Schomburg, shall we? Yep. Uh, 
Uh, g'day everyone and welcome to a special interview we've got uh, to kick off the 2021 AFL season and uh, it's a young gun from the Adelaide Crows, one of my favourite young stars, Harry Schoenberg. How are you going mate? Yeah, not too bad. Really good actually. So. Uh, very good. Now, uh, How are you going yourself? Yeah, it's Friday so uh, everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah, that's the way, that's the way. Mate, um, we've been really keen followers of you on the Crowcast since you joined uh, the club, and uh, I've got to say, I'm, I'm not going to put big uh, big expectations on you, but uh, uh, I do have them. <laughs> but if you don't mind, we might just um, we might just backtrack a little bit and uh, just uh, um, have a quick chat about how you made it into the uh, Crow squad. And you're a Mid North boy, is that right? Yeah, mid north boy. So I'm originally from the Clare Valley uh, yep. in the country. So I grew up there on a small farm with my family, and um, I made the transition into Adelaide. I went to uh, school in PAC, so um, came down here for year eleven and year twelve. And as a boarder, um, obviously a bit different living away from home and in the city life, but I uh, got used to it pretty quickly and um, played a bit of footy at Woodward West Torrens, and then obviously at the school itself, and then um, was obviously lucky enough to get drafted by the Crows so um, it all worked out really well and I'm enjoying my time so far. Yeah now you kind of uh, downplayed that a bit but you initially were overlooked for the uh, for the state squad in your draft year weren't you and you basically did what you do on the field and just didn't take no for an answer. Yeah so um, there was a state selection squad at the start of the pre-season of my draft year and um I got left out of that squad and um, that's something I really wanted to make to sort of set up my year and I was a bit disappointed in myself and um, I sort of wasn't um, at the level where I wanted to be and um, to be honest, it was probably one of the best things in my footy career because I was able to sort of step back and have a look at what was going wrong and what wasn't what I wasn't doing right and um, I went to a few people and fixed that up and obviously it helped really well and um, yeah, and I was lucky enough to get picked back into the state squad when championships came around and um, had a really good carnival, and then I was obviously lucky enough to get drafted. So, um, yeah, like I said, it was probably the best thing for my footy career. Yeah, did you get um, feedback from Brenton Phillips and the blokes involved in the squad at the time of your non-selection, or did you basically just have to grit your teeth and work it out yourself? Uh, there's a little bit of feedback, but there wasn't a whole lot. Um, I was lucky enough to have a manager in Michael Doherty at the time, so um, I worked real closely with him, and um, he got me a few contacts with um, Warwick Raymond, who also works at the Crows as a yep. gym and strength coach. So I went and saw him pretty much for the whole year and pretty much at his um, own local gym that he runs and uh, just did a lot of weights and um, some body work and some real fitness and stuff. So just stuff to sort of build up my game and build my confidence and, um, yeah, which really helped um, throughout the year. So, um, yeah, that was probably my main thing was working closely with him and my manager. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Awesome, and it must have helped. I mean, you ended up ranking second in uh, in clearances and disposals over the competition, I think, and uh, got an All Australian nod and uh, the MVP for the for the South Australian team. So, uh, I mean, that's a that's a you can't underrate uh, your effort to go from a non selection to that sort of uh, outcome. That's fantastic. Yeah, no, thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, originally my main my main thoughts coming into the championships was just to play so um obviously i just put my head down and um, tried to play the best footy i could for the team as well and um i was obviously lucky enough to get those awards and um it's a great honor to me and it's something i always remember so um really got some made some good friendships in that team and there's a lot of boys that sort of got drafted from there as well that i'm still keeping in touch with but um yeah so a great experience and something i always remember yeah, fantastic. Now, uh, so you got drafted, and uh, you got drafted to the Adelaide Crows at a fairly interesting time in the Crows' history, uh, a fair amount of change happening at the club. How have you found it um, in terms of just settling into the club and, and dealing with all the new staff that probably are also dealing with settling in as well? Yeah, um, obviously it was a bit different, but um, coming into the club, there's a lot of changes. Obviously, a new head coach and new head of footy, but um, a, lot, a lot of players that sort of uh, left as well but um, it, we all handled it really well and um, something that I found when I first came to the club is that everyone was really welcoming um, so it was real easy for myself and all the other first years and the new players and coaches to sort of just be connected as one and that's a big focus at the Crows is we want to be one big family and 
we're all in and um, we're all having a good time. So um, especially um, last year, leading into this year now as well, it's got a whole lot better. And we're all, as one, like I said, one big family and we're um, achieving to be great. So um, that's the main thing that I sort of um, came away from it, which is good. So hopefully we can get better at that as well. Yeah, fantastic. Now, uh, your debut season was pretty solid um, for a young lad uh, and you got thrown in the deep end a little bit because just basically because of how our squad looks and where we're sitting in the grand scheme of things. But uh, how, how did you find uh, the step up in pace into the AFL scene? Yeah, it was a lot quicker, I can tell you yeah. that for sure. But um, yeah, um, I was really nervous, to be honest, for my first game. I'm not really a person who gets nervous before things, but that's probably my um, first thing where I really felt really nervous. But um, as soon as I sort of got into the club rooms, I felt really cool and just got into my usual schedule. And, um, yeah, my first game was amazing. It's something I always remember. And I was lucky enough to have my parents and my friends come to the game. Obviously, it was hard with COVID last year, but yeah. um, I got because I debuted in sort of the back end of the season, I was lucky enough to allow my parents and friends to come. So um, a very special moment. Um, we obviously didn't get the win, but um, something I always remember. So, um, yeah, great experience. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, you uh, applied yourself really well. I, I, there's a couple of times I remember just um, uh, observing a bit of composure in tight and uh, uh, some nice candy being shown a couple of times, I think even a blind turn there at one stage. What do you reckon the strengths of your game are, mate? Yeah, just contested footy, um, coming up to the stoppage. Uh, like to try, like you said, try to win some clearances. So, like sort of rough and tough, getting in my head, getting low, blow, and getting ground balls. Sort of using my speed to burst out of packs and either dishing it off to other ball users. So, um, and also like going up forward and kicking a goal. So, I think that's my main two sort of strengths of my game, and um, that I'm keep improving on at training. So yeah, yeah. and um, like we've got a fair amount of new midfielders in during the year. I don't know whether you ever played any footy with Lukey Peddler from PAC, but um, him and Sam Berry and a few others have come in. Has Matthew talked to you about um, what he sees your role is going forward in the midfield? Yeah, pretty similar to what I've done last week. So, um, having little instances of um, in the midfield, and then um, I think I'll sort of play a little bit up half forward as well, come up to for the stoppage, but... Um, yeah, that's probably my main role like I did last year, yeah. um, which is good. And those two young boys in um, Sam Berry and Luke Pedler have come to the club and they've been training really well. So as a club and, and, and myself personally, we've, I've been really happy in the way they've conducted themselves and um, been training. So a um, lot to look forward to those two. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, look, it looks really promising. Uh, the internal trial footage last week was great. And those two young lads, Pedler in particular, just looks like he was made for AFL footy. So... Between the two of you and Sam and Chase coming on and a few others uh, coming in there, it looks really good in the midfield going forward. Is there a sense of confidence at the Crows now or is a, like a, a an air that they're, you're just starting a journey with this new squad? Yeah, definitely. I think that sort of started last year. Um, obviously, some of the results that happened we weren't happy with, but I reckon to the back end of the season, I think from that Geelong game, um, we sort of started from there when we sort of started connecting as a group and playing some good footy and obviously we won three in a row and sort of um, finished the year off as a high and sort of and now we've started that in this pre-season so we started we've all come back really fit and strong and um, we've um, continued that on over the last couple of weeks and obviously a few trial matches and now we're playing court tomorrow so um, yeah we're we're really confident as a group and looking forward to I guess the future and what we can do so we're all really keen to get better and and learn so um it's a very exciting moment at the club at the moment and well, i think everyone could agree with me on that point so yeah um, yeah, yeah. I, I can i can tell you from a crow supporters point of view and certainly from our listeners that um yeah, everyone's really optimistic and excited there's, there's a really good feel about the place it's been refreshed and uh we're all backing you in mate so that's really good now look before we let you go uh just a couple of uh stupid questions uh is it is anyone at the club running a book um, about which round Shane McAdams going to take Mark of the Year this year? Writing a book? Run, running a book, uh, like um, taking bets. Yeah, I'm not sure. He took a very good mark last week. <laughs> yeah. So we might have to have um, each round. Just He'll probably take a hanger each round, I reckon, the way yeah. he's going. So, um, yeah. no, nah, he's been training really well and 
And obviously we saw last year what he can do in the air on someone's head. So I wouldn't be surprised with a few more this year. So, um, no, he's a he's a big fan favourite. So, um, yeah. no, he's been playing, training really well. So well, look out, mate. I say. Just make sure you're not the ladder, mate, because if he posterizes yeah. you, that's that never goes away. <laughs> exactly. I'm staying clear for him. I'll get I'll get the crumbs if he drops it. That's it. Um, yeah. That's it. Now, um, you've got Phoebe as your midfield coach. Um, yeah. Is, has there been any like Sloney or someone sort of mentoring, or how does that work? The the senior boys getting around the younger lads. Yeah. So um, last year I worked really close with Matty Crouch. So. Um, he was my mentor, so especially through that COVID break um, when we could only train in two in pairs, um, I trained with Matt yep. um, pretty much every day. So he was a, he was a big um, role model for me, and um, he taught me a lot of things. So I think it's pretty similar with um, Bez and Peddler this year. That sort of connected with Sloney, and um, even Ben Keys has been really good for the younger boys. So um, yeah, so it's it, it's a good connection between um, youth and. Youth and the more of the older boys, so um, no, they've been great with yeah. everything. So and then obviously VB as well now coming into the club. Um, obviously an ex captain and um, he's a bit younger, a bit closer to our age, so he's been great. I've connected really well with VB and um, yeah, he's been awesome. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do together this year. Yeah, fair enough. Now, if there was uh, any smoky of the new recruits that you reckon might uh, burst onto it, who do you reckon that might be this year? Apart from yourself, yeah, of course. Um, I reckon there's probably I reckon Phil Fort would definitely definitely get a chance. He's been training really well up forward and then obviously like we mentioned before, Luke Luke Pedler and um, Sam Barry have been playing really well and training really well. So um those two that could easily slip into the midfield and, and obviously big Riley Phil Fort as well up forward. So um those three will probably get that chance this year, but um yeah, you never know. So um, yeah. no, looking forward to it. Big Riley's an exciting prospect. I bet you you won't mind lacing him out a few times in the next five or ten years. Yeah, that'd be really nice, actually. So, <laughs> goals for us, that'd be nice. Mate, look, we really appreciate your time. I know it's uh, the end of your week and you've got a, a game to prepare for um, tomorrow against the uh, against the enemy, even though it is a trial match, just to uh, understand, as I'm sure you do, that uh, we still hate their guts, so make sure you beat them. <laughs> <laughs> A um, nice early win would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be good, mate. Yeah, that'd be good. Now, look, uh, honestly, from all of us at Crowcast, we, we love your work so far. Um, we'll be watching you with great anticipation. Um, we're really excited um, for what the Crows can do over the next two to three years and uh, wish you all the best for the 2021 season and really grateful for your time this afternoon, mate. No worries. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and hope you have a good day. Thanks, Harry. How good was that? That yeah, bloody good. Yeah. Excellent. He's an excellent young lad. Um, I love him. I love him as a player. Um, I didn't want to uh, put to the hard wood on him too much. Something's gone wrong with my camera. <laughs> You're echoing this, mate. Eh? Hey? You're yeah. echoing. Yeah. you got a good reverb going on. If you're going to be over, you'd be okay. You're talking. I don't know what's going on. Is that better? Yeah. Well, yeah, I think so. Beautiful. Uh, f- apologies to those watching YouTube. My <laughs> my camera's run out of batteries, and uh, <laughs> I've got I've got resting bitch face going on at the moment. So I'll just plug that back in while we're chatting. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Harry, Harry Schomburg. Um, I I don't mind telling you. I think he's a future Brownlow medalist. Uh, I I remember a couple of games last year with just the three of us just talking afterwards, just going, this kid's got it. He just has it. He's a footballer. He just knows how to find space. He knows how to create space for other players as well. And the one thing is you really contrast him with Jones is that when they put Jones on half forward, he's a little lost. But Schoenberg isn't lost. He creates that. He makes that half forward line his. And then when he went into the midfield, he just looked like he fit at the level. He um, He's very composed and close. Um, I love the way he uses the ball. Um, he's intelligent the way he uses the ball. Um, he doesn't mind getting in and getting his own ball, but he's also able, I think, to hurt and create on the outside. 
And that's yeah. what I really like about him the most, the, the, his versatility. Um, and as he said himself on that on that interview, he, he likes going forward and, and kicking a snag as well. Um, and I just think he, he's he's in good shape. Um, but the, the biggest thing that struck me out of that interview was the adversity that he went through during his draft year and the lack of feedback that he got from the state uh, coaches and his ability um, to be able to take stock, not drop his bundle, force his way back into the squad by the time the championships came around and then be the MVP and get an All-Australian nod. I mean, that's yeah. some serious determination and commitment to your sport, don't you think? And from such a young age that to recognise, okay, they're not giving me what I need. I'm going to go find it elsewhere because I want to improve yeah, and I other, want to play. The other thing I like about it is uh, unlike, say, like the Jones and a couple of other uh, draftees we've had, he's not ap apologetic for being out there. He, when he went, right from the first time he went out there, he thinks I'm part of this, and and, he did, and he's played accordingly, and that, which which I like. Whereas Jones, I just think it almost looks apologetic for being out there at times. And another uh, play, people that play their first few games often look like it, you know, thinking that well I'm not as good as them yet or something like that. But Harry doesn't seem to have any of those problems. He just has, he just fitted in right from word go in my opinion. And I agree with you, Fiend, and the sky's the limit for the boy. Yeah, no, he's got yeah. the little. He, he's a he's a ten year player for the for the club in my opinion. He's he's just a standout, and I love him. It was a great interview. Yeah, it was a great interview. Um, who's that feeding back? Is that you, Maka? Just turn your speakers down a little bit, mate. Um, it's really uh, good that we've been able to re-engage with the club as well. There'll be lots of player interviews and other things from the club during the course of the year. So thank you very much to Ian Shuttleworth and the communications team down at the Adelaide Footy Club, and thanks, of course, to Harry for giving us his time after the captain's run on Friday afternoon. So, moving on from all of that. Um, yeah, I just have one thing there, Fiend, before you do go. It is great by the club for this early in the year uh, to set that sort of standard of cooperation with us because uh, I'm not sure that would have been the case under the old regime. So, uh, things have really uh, picked up in that department, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, I think we might be able to get one or two more during the year. Uh, well, we're aiming for at least monthly interviews and hopefully fortnightly interviews uh, this year, um, just chatting with uh, the boys down there. So, I mean, that's uh, that's something to really look forward to. We'll be posting all our interviews individually on YouTube as well as part of this cast. Um, so uh, people that want to have another look at it don't have to wade through the cast. They can just wait for the upload and uh, it'll be there to have another listen to. Um, so we've had an internal trial and we've had uh, the trial against the power so far. Um, the internal trial, there was some interesting things. Let's talk about that quickly first because it was our first look at some new first-year players. Uh, Luke Peddler, Sam Berry, um, young Jimmy Rowe. Uh, who else was there that uh, debuted? Uh, Jackson Haight. Yeah, there's this yeah, uh, little guy called um, Tilthorpe. Yeah, and of course Riley Tilthorpe. Uh, Thil Thilthorpe. Uh, Thilthorpe. Um, they pronounce it maybe Tilthorpe. They call him Tilly, don't they? Yeah, I don't know what they call him. Um, but uh, yeah, look, I really enjoyed watching the uh, the stream that the club put out after the uh, internal trial, and I really, really, really liked the look of Luke Peddler and Sam Berry in the middle. I and liked. I liked that midfield absolutely. setup they had. I actually think that was a better midfield setup. With when you had Perry, no Peddler, Berry, Haitley, the I that's a that was a really nice mix, and yep. they were giving it yep. to the uh, the supposed A grade midfield. I thought they beat them. <laughs> I did. I, was, I, I think you're pretty much right there, Macca. Yeah, yeah. The only one that did did did, did all right, uh, other than the uh, three that you mentioned. In the opposition sides was was Laird really? Yeah, I think Laird. Laird, Laird is looked but good. But now the the three young ones there they dominated. Yeah, um, agree. And the trial last week, which was the first uh, competitive hit out for um, for for the club and for the new players against opposition, a real opposition. The first game, which was touted as the twos. Um, 
um, gave Port a little bit of a touch-up. Port coming back late, but uh, the two's getting up. And uh, again, Sam Berry really, really put himself forward. Um, and I also thought that uh, Riley, <laughs> Riley Thilthorpe just gave us a bit of a sniff about what we might be, uh, what what we might have just got our hands on. What a highlight through all that would make, just that one game. I mean, he, he's got one quarter. And most players have the bloody year. That was, he was sensational. I mean, the, he, he's done it all. I mean, he's done it at the ground level. He's done it uh, left foot, right foot, overhead marks, the lot. We have really got the package. And I am thinking that this boy could well be a generational. <laughs> oh, no, no yeah, doubt no, about it. No, no pressure. Yeah. Peter, Peter J, if he's listening to this, would be laughing his head off because I, I, I can't remember, but I think you were on the same bandwagon as me, uh, Macca, with regards to Logan McDonald. Well, and, you were so uh, wrong, mate. I, I am, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to admit it. I, I was wrong, 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 and I was right, 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 and thank fuck they did. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Logan will probably be a fantastic AFL player as well, but... By God, Riley Thilthorpe. <laughs> and there's a debate going on in chat, you know, is it Tilthorpe, is it Thilthorpe, is it Ilthorpe? We'll just call him Big Riley <laughs> for now. Yeah, we'll just call him Riley. <laughs> um, but he just looks like something, doesn't he? He looks like um, uh, a new version of Ben King, uh, in my opinion. He's fantastic overhead. He's great at ground level. Um, he's got footy smarts. He doesn't play like a lumbering 200 and whatever centimetre tall he he plays uh very much like a a tom lynch or one of those other really agile tools and uh my goodness me we need to look after him medically and physically and we just need to bring him on nicely but a uh, lot to like about that young lad isn't he a beautiful mover for a guy he's size like 201 centimeters and he moves like a small guy yeah he, that was he, the thing that got me the most mac it was just his agility for his size it's it's unheard of until probably the last five years, you know, the generational increase in size in general. But even once once you get over 200 centimetres, you don't see a lot of that agility in AFL football yet. But over the last couple of years, we've seen some players that just play like, uh, <laughs> like they're, you know, tall midfielders. I'm just a... I'm just a Sorry, go on. Like in that half time in that third quarter, I think it was a period of about eight to ten minutes. As I said, he, he'd have the biggest highlight reel in the world just for that period alone. It just he just dominated, absolutely dominated. Yep. And and ju and just on that, because I think he actually reminds me a little bit of Sean Wren, because he was very like that as well. Which people nothing like that, Nikki. Well, no, 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 no. In in the but Rennie played like a midfielder as well as soon as the ball hit the ground. And he was actually very good below his knees and he moved quite fluently for a guy of his size. And that's why Wren was one of the best ruckmen at the time. Tilthorpe has got a lot bigger body on him, but he just reminded me of that kind of, that ability to to just look like he is a smaller player. Um, You're going to be another level, Nicky. Oh, be another level. oh yeah. before... Rennie did his knee. Yeah, I look, not bad. I, but I did. I love. I love them putting him on the wing as well in the trial game. He looked really comfortable on the wing. So you know, we're all agreed that uh, we made the right choice at number two. Uh, can we all agree that uh, our next couple of picks, uh, Lukey Peddler in particular, also looked the goods, although he didn't uh, run around against Port. Well, uh, he did play against Port. Um, he uh, only oh, played, that's right. he played, two to played a little bit. Yeah, no, he, looked, he was fine. Um, he had had a very good, it was very, very good in the internal trials, as we've already said. He, Barry, and Hakeley Jackson, they they dominated. Uh, but uh, I thought he was going very well, and uh, and I think he was just being managed. That they just played two to big quarters, and then they didn't play him again after that. And there's no report of any injury. So, um, yeah, no, I like Pedler. Pedler's going to be a very. I, I think he's going to be another 200 game player too. I think he's good. he's a very good type. Um, Sam Berry, another one, probably a little bit unexpectedly, has really come out of the blocks and shown that uh, he he is right in the frame for uh, early season selection, in my opinion. Tough as tungsten, isn't he? I mean, he, he just... 
he's got a massive work ethic. I mean, he's either he goes in hard for the ball, but you know, yeah. give him half half a chance, he'll tackle people, he'll get in there. Uh, I, I love everything about him. He's he just uh, all he represents what we need. Somebody who's prepared to work their ass off. And uh, I have no doubt he's going to play uh, a lot of uh, football for us too. He could easily be another Terry game player as well. Yep. So I, I'm, I'm yep. really wrapped our first three so far. Yeah, and um, and the thing yeah. is with me with Barry is not only is he all that tough, his skill set is really nice and clean as well, and he makes good decisions. Yeah, and that's that's, that's what's really stood out for me. That's probably been uh, the small knock on the next guy I want to talk about, Jackson Hately. Um, I thought Jackson, uh, particularly in the internal trial, did really well. Um, flashed in and out a little bit against Port Adelaide, but uh, just needs to work on his disposal a little bit. It seemed a little bit rusty in that regard. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think he could also do a little bit more as well. Um, um, I would say that, um, and it's interesting when uh, I saw Nick's being asked a question and answer thing, you know, one, they'd say a name and he'd just give an answer. And for J uh, Jackson Hately, it was a maybe. Yeah. Uh, whereas with, uh, and I think the answer, Hately, Hately's going to be a good player for us, don't get me wrong, but he's actually got to, just do what he's supposed to be doing, and and do more of it. And uh, I think I think I think he'll be okay. But but as I, you know, somebody in the chat has said that Hayley hasn't shown much. If you ask me, well, I'd go a little bit further than that. But he hasn't shown a lot. He's got to show more than what he is. So, yeah, he'll be okay. I think he will be okay. I think the other string to Jackson's like... bow is that uh, uh, we haven't really seen him up forward much yet, um, but he does play very tall, and uh, I'd like to see him maybe run around half forward a little bit, uh, you know, uh, swapping through the midfield maybe with Shuey, um, because I reckon he might be a bit of a goal-kicking mid eventually. Well, it, yeah, it well looks... I don't know. I've never seen him play there, so I can't comment for him. Well, I saw him play yeah. play there a bit for centrals, and uh, uh, he kicked a few snags. So uh, I reckon I reckon he'll uh, he'll develop that way. But uh, sorry, Nick, go on. I was just going to say it looked like we were using him a little bit as a tagger against Port. Um, possibly um, Chase Jones, I thought was one that was used a little bit in that regard. And let's let's move on to uh, oh, let's quickly just talk about Braden Cook, who's the other uh, early um, selection that we got last year. Um, probably the the quietest of the bunch, in my opinion. But uh, I, I still think he looks a good. Sorry, the thing you still talk about Hately? No, Braden Cook. Uh, Braden Cook. Oh, sorry, I did. I never actually. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not coming so uh, through so clearly. Um, well, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted we took Cook because I think he's got massive upside potential. Yep. He's raw as, and um, they're just managing him at the moment. But he's he, he's not ready yet to, to um, play at this level. And yep. uh, PJ is saying he's battling with the preseason alone, yep. and uh, uh, that's obviously correct. Uh, but I, I don't expect anything out of Cook, Cook this year, but I think next year, once he's had a couple of pre-seasons behind him and a, a lot more muscle put on him, etc., yep. we could have a... He's going to be a very, very good player. Yeah, what I meant, Vardy, was that he's been the quietest out of, you know, in terms of attention and, and uh, you know, getting getting uh, media attention, etc. Um, now, let's have, a, let's have a talk quickly about... Um, some of the blokes who have been on our list for a couple of years, and let's talk first about Chase Jones. Um, I watched Chase very closely in the Port game, and I've got to say, and I, I really don't want to shit can young players this year because they're all developing, etc., uh, etc. Et but I was worried about some of the things that I saw with Chase. Uh, I, I watched him ball watch, and I watched him watched him not really have a defensive aspect to his game. Can't argue with you. Yeah, I watched him very closely too. And I was shattered with his, with his game. I thought, surely this boy is going to finally come good. But, um, well, if he's going to come good, it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, he would, it was too late once he got in the defensive mindset. He needed to 
be more proactive and he needed to to cover that space and and it and it was always the too late which is such a pity because he's really got all that skill set that should make him succeed but you contrast him with Schoenberg they're both playing a similar kind of role and there's Schoenberg is a, to me is a first pick ahead of Chase even though Chase is quicker Oh, 100%. PJ makes a good a good um, comment um, that you, you can see Chase thinking. He doesn't seem to be playing naturally. Um, and I think I, I categorised him on Twitter after the game as a straight line player. I, I feel like when he can run at the ball, take the ball and use his pace, he's very, very good. And we saw that even though he muffed the shot at goal, that breakaway uh, that he did yeah. in the Port game. But his positioning seems all wrong. Um, when he was uh, when he was against Travis Boat, Travis Boat pushed off him easily, and and Chase oh, didn't that didn't really terrible. seem to be able to um, at least put body on him and, and keep with him. Um, I'm not sure whether at AFL level Chase is a um, is a midfielder. He could be a wingman, um, and. Um, As I said, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not willing to, to put a cross through anyone right now, um, but I'm just not sure whether he's a midfielder in the, in, in the AFL. Yeah, I think, I think he's got a mental problem. I, you know, he doubts himself too much, I think. Um, and, you know, he's reactive rather than proactive. Um, and we, we we're talking about Schoen, Schoenberg. He, he, just, he comes in there from nowhere and he just sort of, has a crack and um, makes things happen for himself. Yeah. Uh, and even McHenry. McHenry, uh, who I've really bagged in the past, and I will in the future if he doesn't play well, uh, because, uh, you know, these are prime draft picks we, we've turned up to these two boys. But McHenry was by far the better of the two on the, on the weekend. Yeah. And, look, um, just to finish off on Chase, you know, he hasn't had a lot of opportunities being sat behind our, you know, tried and tested midfield for the last couple of years. Um, we heard uh, Harry say that he's being mentored by Matty Crouch. I hope that Chase is getting good mentoring and, and good leadership from Nathan Van Berlo um, and others at the club uh, because I feel like he might be a David McKay type if you, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, but if you remember back to our interview with DMAC a couple of years ago, DMAC uh, admitted that he was very task oriented. And I just wonder whether Chase is a bit the same. I just wonder whether Chase needs to have the game simplified for him and just have yeah, one I, particular I, 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 role and let him play that role. Yep. Look, yeah. I, I'd, I'd love him to go out there and just be given no instructions how to play and just say, just go after it and get it. Yeah. And just see how he went. Now, you mentioned Ned McHenry, uh, definitely the best game I've seen him play uh, at AFL level, even though it was a trial. Um, and it felt to me like he just played a little bit calmer, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, there's still plenty of energy and, and a bit of chirp and all the rest of it, but he, he looked like he was a little bit more composed and it looked like he had the speed of the game a little bit more this week. Yes, you're right again. Uh, I, I thought he, instead of concentrating on being an irritating little ant, <laughs> and, uh, and and he was so much better for it. As yeah. you say, he played in a much calmer sense. He played, played as a footballer rather than an irritant. And uh, he actually showed that he can play a bit of footy. And I actually thought, well, I didn't see a star, but I saw a bloke that probably might end up playing some a lot more Some, games. Something to work with. Yes, that, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, my, my one knock on Ned is that at AFL level, he's thought he's had more time and he tries to do too much instead of just taking that very first option, which is what he needs to do. He was often, and that's where he was getting caught because he was just trying to do too much. Whereas he, and I can see that a little bit in the trial game, but this week up against Port agree with you two totally in that he had that better composure. He was getting rid of the ball quicker. It was, and he's got some nice little footy smarts because I've really liked watching him and Jones when they were our key midfielders in the SANFL team. Yeah. I really liked the work that they would do. They're playing very different roles in the AFL 
team, yep. but I, I just yep. felt he took a nice step forward in this game against Port. Yep. Now let's talk about Harry uh, quickly. Um, I've been interested to see how they've been playing him because I actually thought he'd be a first choice uh, midfielder, but they've been almost keeping him out of the midfield and playing him a lot up forward. Um, probably played about 60-40 up forward this week. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I just reckon you, you put the kid in the middle and let him get the ball, don't you? Well, to me, um, when you look at the starting uh, uh, three in the middle, it was Keys, Laird and Slow. Yep. Now, Sloney, in days gone by, was very, very dynamic in there, but he's not now. And, um, and, then, and if I remember rightly, Sloane spent a fair bit of last year on a half-forward flank as well. Yeah, I want to talk about the seniors in a little bit. So let's uh, let's focus on Harry, and I'm, I, I know you're getting to your point. No, I'm getting to my point, which is this, is that, that putting Sloane back in the middle is actually um, keeping Harry out in the middle. And I think yep. that Harry stage is a better midfielder than Sly. 100%. Yeah, because we need the speed. And that, that's what the thing is. You've got to have, and I think with the way our team's developing, we also need that youth. We need that just little bit of exuberance, sort of, I'm just going to give this a try and see if it works. I think we actually get that a bit from Keys, um, but we need that little bit of extra speed in that midfield and that that and even if it is he's, he's we, got a strong body as well i don't know whether we get speed from schoenberg what we do get we, is we get is speed create, of ball we, movement yeah we get creativity from harry i don't yeah. think harry's going to be as easily tagged out of a game as as rory has shown to be in the last couple of years um i think no. um and that's not a knock on sloney but we've we're just saying saying what we've seen uh, Schoenberg seems to me to be able to bustle his way through something like that. Um, so I agree with you, Mac. Um, I think, uh, and as I said, we'll talk about the seniors in a minute, but I, I think I'd like to see Shuey in there more and Sloan less. Um, the other yeah, one I wanted yeah. to talk about uh, is Fisher Mackesy. Um, and I'm mindful of the fact that young fish is still young. Um, a couple of things concern me. Uh, he also seems to be a bit of an overthinker. Um, and he also seems to be very hard on himself. Well, I was going to raise him in the sense, and I see PJ says he thinks that Mackesy will be fine, and I bloody hope he's right, because there's, two, there's a couple of things about Mackesy that I don't like, and... Uh, one of these is that second point you raised there, Fiend, is that he recriminates with himself so much that I think it affects mm. his, very, his neck. Effort. So that's one thing. I'd, uh, and also I see that Zadie Magic quite rightly also points out he's got to, he's got to learn to keep his feet. Yep. Um, I just, the thing that I see missing in his game is just sheer aggression. I don't see any nasty aggression in his game, which I think every good defender's got to have some of. Do you think and, Daniel uh, Tarley has got aggression? In, in a way, yes, he has, in the sense that um, his aggression is he does not want any bastard to beat him. So he every contest, he's in there and he's at it hard physically with his body up against them and spoiling. And it, I would hate to play against Tarley. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Not, not saying that. I, I'm just trying to clarify what you reckon by, uh, what you reckon by aggression. I, I think... Actually, the opposite might be true in that Fisher might be playing the game with the same mindset that he played his junior football um, and probably not being used to getting beaten more often. Um, and I still think also that he, he has at least one more, maybe two more years in the gym before he has enough strength through the core to be able to hold his position and to be able to hold body on body against big fellas. But I agree with one of the commenters. I, I don't know whether it was PJ or Vardy. I just think we just need to keep playing him. Well, he's obviously going to get better for it. But, uh, but I think your, your point's also valid about uh, being able to physically match it by being, making himself stronger as well. Uh, if, if, for example, if you take Borlase, and now Borlase, he's young, 
but I tell you what, I I thought he played very very well, and I think he's he's got the right attitude. Nick, Nick, I'm kind of in two minds as to whether we need to keep playing him at AFL level because to me it's that balance of the development. I agree, he's he can play some games, but I don't think he can play a full year. Um, and I think it's got to be very much prevaricated on what is best for his development in the long term. He's got some really nice skills. I've mm. a couple of things we saw last year, and you're right. He just needs that little bit of extra strength that's going to take a while, unfortunately, to come. But he gets in the right body positions, but because he doesn't have it, he kind of gets pushed out by a lot more the experience yeah. in the bigger AFL mm. bodies. But there's there's a lot there to like, um, and I do think as well, like you said, that he has that expectation on himself mm. that also has to be managed, particularly yeah. because yeah. of mm. where our team is. The ball's going to come down there a lot more, and he's not going to win every contest. But I do see him a little bit like the Talia. I agree with you, Maka, that there's that, that kind of the hate – the hatred to be beaten one on one. Yes, I think that's there. We just need to manage it correctly. Yeah. I think Easy on chat made a very good point uh, that Fish has not had the benefit of any SANFL development at, at all because we didn't have the SANFL yeah. team last year. And I think it's a really good point. He's he has been thrust into the deep end. He is a big lad, um, and you know the the Rileys aside. Um, most big lads take a couple of years, um, you know, and uh, you're right, easy, uh, and it's something that had escaped me, but uh, dead set right, that he would have benefited from some time in, in the SANFL honing his skills and developing his body and his game. So, um, you know, let's... Uh, the, the trouble is with Tali out, um, we're going to have... Uh, <laughs> Young Fisher and Geordie Butts probably up against uh, Jezza Cameron and Tom Hawke first up. Oh, no. <laughs> we might Poor get bastards. beaten by 100 goals. <laughs> well, that, what you just played is Ab not, Ab not a pretty picture. Not a pretty picture at all. No. And midfield's going to pull their finger out and then some. Yeah. Um, look, let's talk about some of the seniors before we wind it up. Um, first of all... Uh, Tex uh, has given the club a real dilemma, in my opinion, because doesn't he look fit and firing? Well, I look so good. He turned the clock back about three or four years, I reckon. <laughs> and and the bloke that hates that the most is Darcy Fogarty, I think. <laughs> well, it's, I had him retiring at the end of last year. Yeah, and uh, but he's you can tell he's lost a lot of weight and. Um, uh, his movement is excellent, and um, I, I thought he played reasonably well. So, uh, yeah, I really liked him up high. He was that's that's where he used to be so damaging. Is that linky player? He was in there. But the, what I didn't like was so that that period in uh, the third yeah, third quarter where they kicked six on the tra on the, on the trot. And we were so impotent. We had no way of uh, stopping it at all. And I understand we are the bottom team from last year playing the uh, team. Uh, I don't know where Mac has gone, but I've been listening to his microphone fading there for the last 10 minutes. So. <laughs> um, Mac, we can't hear you if you're trying to talk. You might have to uh, log out and log back in. Um, the thing, the thing that worries me with Tex is that we're now into another season of Darcy and Tex fighting for the same spot, in my opinion, Nick. And it really bothers me uh, because like, Darcy flashed in and out. He did a couple of nice things. But uh, it's getting to the point where we're almost calling him a bust. Which is annoying. Yep. Well, uh, and talking about Fogarty, well, I, he doesn't. You notice him for what he does because he doesn't do a lot. Um, and so when he does something, it's pretty good and it stands out. But geez, he's got to do more. 
Well, it's the same. There's just not enough spots. Um, the only the only thing that I can see happening is that um, Walker may end up actually taking um, Lynch's spot, um, which would give us a little bit of room for Darcy to stay in the team. But as it stands at the moment, as we've said for a long time now, Tex and Darcy have very similar games and they play a very similar type of game. And I think Darcy has struggled um, or suffered as a result of Tex being in the side. But on form, and I'm sure Nixie would have instilled a we're picking on form mantra um, as we go through this development phase, you can't knock Texas selection. So it's going to be something that really interesting to watch pan out. Um, and look, I wish Darcy all the best because I think he's got a load of talent. He's stripped a lot fitter this year. Um, and I just hope that the club manages that situation properly. Yeah, well, the other thing too is that um, now we're playing Port Adelaide. No, we, yeah, we are playing Port Adelaide again this week, aren't we? Um, yeah. Down at Now, either. do you bring up the uh, into the A's and play in at that level this well, week? Well, let's just cover off a couple of other seniors first and then we might talk about uh, that stuff, Mac. Um, oh, I suggested that I thought that would probably be a problem for Fogarty as well. That's why I made that. Yeah, well, possibly. Um, Rory Sloan, we've talked about already. I, I, Sloaney just bobbed in and out of it. I don't want to see Sloaney in the midfield. And I'll be, I was, I've actually been a bit disappointed to see him as much in the midfield as what he has been. Um, I, don't, I don't think we get any value yeah. out of him. I think um, we'd get far more value out of him on, on a on a wing or a forward or a back flank. And yeah. uh, if this is a case of Rory saying no one tells Rory that he can't play midfield, then I'd be really disappointed because he hasn't been an effective midfielder for us, in my opinion, um, for probably the last two seasons. Would you agree? Yeah, oh, I 100% agree. That's why I yeah. made my comment earlier. He he just is not giving us what he used to give us. And uh, I think as he, he, his efforts could be better used elsewhere, as you say. Yeah, yep. really want to see him on a wing. Don't yep. want to see him in the midfield. 100%. Um, now, who else was I going to talk about? Uh, Billy Frampton. Uh, the, uh, the fight between Billy and Elliot Himmelberg uh, has taken a surprising twist because... Uh, the back end of last season, the Berg really presented himself as a as a future uh, centre half forward. Um, hasn't had a look in, and Billy's uh, come up a lot fitter. I don't know whether Billy Frampton is the answer, uh, but certainly on present form, you would say he's the better of the two at this stage on form. Well, you have to say that, but you've got that nagging doubt in the back of your mind: is he going to? Let us down a bit ultimately because he is Billy Frampton. Um, but, uh, you know, he played well enough to justify his spot on the weekend. But uh, will he do that every week? That's the big question. Yeah. I agree with GK in the in the chat on YouTube. Um, I think they just should make a decision on Himmelberg and be done with it. Um, and Billy is a, an injury backup. I, I think Himmelberg needs extended time. I think he needs the club to show confidence in him. He is also a big guy. He's been on our list a little bit longer. Um, but he showed us at the back of the last year what he can do when he's playing confident footy. And I really, really hope that the club back him in because if not, I think he might be lost to the club. Yeah, I agree. I think, that, I think that's... Um, I, 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 what I find disappointing is that Hiddleberg was coming on very, very nicely at the end of last year. Uh, and I think he... Just watching his performance uh, uh, on Saturday, I, almost at times I thought like he'd always drop, you know, drop his chewy a little bit. Um, yep. And there's one, one, yeah. there was one too terrible effort where uh, the ball had gone out of bounds and it was a free kick to the uh, Port Adelaide player. And he was that, instead of standing in the mark, he just walked away and let the player play on. I, as if he wasn't interested. And uh, I just wonder whether we sort of shattered him, shattered him a little bit that Fratton's ahead of him. but. Um, You've got to earn your spot, and uh, but to me, I thought that Himmelberg was going to be the one this year and have a very good year, 
I still think Cranford will probably let us down somewhere along the year. That's, that's just what I think. Nick? Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> Ted Macca teases me about it, um, how much of a G I am for Himmelberg in our forward line. And, <laughs> but it's just the way he works and creates that space and he's such a natural forward. Um, but Frampton actually surprised me in the trial game and he surprised me um, again on the weekend that he was performing better. Mm. Um and that worries me a little bit because I don't think Frampton's Frampton Frampton has the skill set that um, Elliot does, and just that advantage that can be used in our forward line. But if he's not performing, that's also an issue. Mm -hmm. I um, my personal view is that when you're going through a development phase you have to think about who your uh what your next premiership contending team looks like and as well as billy's performing right now i don't think he's in our next premiership contending team and i think elliot might be so Agreed. on that yeah, basis that's, I the same way, that's why i think that mm. i'm disappointed that, that we have done it's gone down the path that it has and obviously it's yeah. been uh Brandon, obviously, Ernie's pocket gets there. So, but it's disappointing because I, I was seeing Himmelberg as being the one, and I think still think he's got more long-term potential than Frampton. I yeah. think what we see with Frampton, what that's all you can get. Yeah, I just, I just <laughs> he's getting a bit hard. He said he's a downer for a, for a Chalmers. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a high rating. That's about a two out of ten. Well, you know, I. Like I said, I don't want to harp on the point, but I just feel like you 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 try and form a new a new nucleus of a side, you, and the uh, one of the very most important things about that is your spine. It still holds true today in modern footy that you got to get your spine right. And I think if you think if you've identified that Himmelberg is part of that, then you you just have to back him in a little bit. He's been in the system long enough um he's shown more when he's been playing well than frampton in my opinion uh he's got more more tricks to his bow than uh than frampton in my opinion yep. and yet, yes billy's been playing well uh and more power to him but in my opinion they need i, I think himmelberg's a bit of a confidence player and i agree with you mac i reckon he might be a little bit shattered and he's got to be more resilient but he might be a little bit shattered that billy's ahead of him right now after the form he showed in the back end of last year yep now i thought that showed in his game uh, that he just wasn't as switched on as he, as he normally is and yep. i think that was more feeling a bit shattered i think that he was there yep. instead of uh, uh fragments was there instead of him that's, that's just what, the way I read it. Yep. We haven't actually talked about one player that really was very exciting, though. So. Well, are, are you going to say Jimmy Roy? No. Oh, because I, I just remembered that I hadn't spoken about Jimmy Roy yet, but go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Who were you talk thinking? About New Who? New Church. New and Borlase. Well, New Church and Borlase, when you consider that they are all well, the freebie players, I mean, New, New Church. He, he has got some excitement about him, that boy, that pace. And he's got some really good tricks. If we can get him to be 100% switched on all the time, he, he could be a real gun. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised, I must admit, because uh, what I, from what I've seen and heard, he's a bit flaky. Um, you know, we didn't take him uh, very high at all. Um, you know, probably to lucky to end up on the list, to be honest with you. But uh, seems to be making every post a winner at the moment. And you're right, uh, Mac. He's got a bit of flair about him, hasn't he? A bit of X factor about him. Yeah, and and PJ quite rightly sums it up very nicely. But what he did was surprise. What comes next? that will be the, the tell. In other words, yeah. will he do that consistently? And and will he do you know grow uh, exponentially as, as he gets more experience as well? Because Sometimes you get the excitement machine, they give you the excitement and nothing else. But, yeah. Uh, 
He did give me the excitement, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so and and he seemed to be more – he just seemed to be more engaged with the game because one of the things we heard about him was he flashed in and out, which isn't unheard of for those type of players, but he seemed to be fairly engaged for the majority of the game, mm. which was really pleasing to say. Yep. Uh, Jimmy yeah. Rowe, yeah. Uh, I've been Love pleasant, him. pleasantly surprised by Jimmy Rowe um, and not so – by what we know he can do, which is get around the goals and, and be in the right position and all the rest of it. But his work rate and his effort to get up the ground, um, people probably forget that he, he has played a fair bit of midfielder as a junior. Um, he's not a stuck-in-a-forward-pocket type goal sneak, um, but I felt his fitness might be a problem. Uh, but he has shown himself to be very durable, very fit, and uh, yep. I like the look of him. Oh, you can lock him in. You can lock him in. I, I thought he was very good, uh, Rowie. Um, and, you know, b- bear in mind he was in the side that was getting thrashed, so it wasn't coming down to the pocket. So he had, he had the initiative to move up a little bit higher. And yep. uh, you know, he, I've watched him for uh, bigger Woodville West Torrens man. And, uh, I've watched him and, and you, well, I would have been shattered if we didn't take him because uh, he he really has got the smarts. He's got the smarts. And, uh you know, his dad was a bit dumb, but he's, he's, he's got the smoke. <laughs> i tell you what, him and Dittmar, uh, uh, Stephen Rowe and Dittmar must be very good mates because the amount of times Stephen Rowe talked up Jimmy Rowe, <laughs> uh, the amount of times Dittmar. Chris Dittmar talked up Jimmy Rowe, uh, and it was well-deserved, but <laughs> I reckon Rowe had a dollar on, on uh, for <laughs> Dittmar every time he mentioned Jimmy's name. It was pretty funny. I, I have to say, he was playing up high in the trial game as well, so I think that's a role that's specifically for him because he's got such that nice disposal into the forward line yeah. and we were keeping Murphy a lot deeper. Yeah. So we were, so they weren't the two of them fighting for the one. It was actually much nice. I liked that spacing out that they were doing um, for that setup with the forwards. Yeah. Um, so I, I, did, I did love that. My, I'm trying to remember if it was my dad or my mum, but just one of them went, well, he's a better footballer than his dad. <laughs> I just, had to, just had to giggle. No, he's a smarter footballer than his dad. His dad yeah, was a, his dad, and I, yeah, his dad was a good footballer. Uh, he was an honest plugger, but the, the, but the, the lad he's got a much much smarter and quicker brain. Yeah. Now, he's going to be he's going to be a good player. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's got the ability to play at that level. Yeah, and uh, uh, the one thing I did do think though, it the game did show us that. We the against a good side, we got to be shown up. There's no doubt about oh, that. Yeah. Well, but that's not a surprise, surely, Macca. Not a surprise. I mean, and this is a thing to keep in mind. Uh, yes, it's a trial, um, and Port Adelaide were probably trying a lot of things as well. But uh, we got beaten by a, a top four team um, with a bunch of kids uh, by less than ten goals on their home deck, um, and. You know, I was expecting 12 to 15, to be honest with you. So I think apart from a patch where Port really got away from us, um, we handled the situation pretty well. And I think we acquitted ourselves well. We didn't drop our bundles terribly much. And there was a lot to like. Yeah, and that's that's all we wanted to see. We know this is going to be another tough year, but there's such really nice promise just to see these guys develop, to see our coaches develop and their game plan develop. That's all I want. Well, and I think you'll get that. I think we'll see that. But um, my, my expectations have been very tempered. I thought that we might have got up to about eight or nine games but uh, this year, but I'm thinking that after watching that, uh, that, that would be a big ask. I want to apologise to the folks out there. I just, I've just been told that I've been sounding like I'm talking in the bloody toilet. Well, they, I just noticed the plug in my bloody laptop had half come out. So I apologise oh, to everybody who's been sounding a bit shit out, but that's yeah. the way it goes. All right. So um, let's finish off the chat um, about the trials just by saying uh, I, I think it was a good start. And I think we've got to keep things into perspective. Um, we played a very good team. Um, we sounded, uh, we looked as if we uh, were trying a few things positionally, um, but there's a lot to like with our juniors, and we really need to stick fat with these juniors as they develop. Well, 
I, and I do think we do have a lot of good juniors coming up, which is which is a good uh, position to be in. Um, and it's going to take time. Uh, that, that's the one thing that we're going to have to be really uh, appreciative of. We do. I think we've got a very good coaching panel now, and they'll come up with a game plan to get the best out of them. And I think that as the season goes on, we will get better and better. But it's, I think we'll be in. It's going to be a struggle when we play the you know the top sides. There's no doubt about that. Um, but um, it, but if we can get players like Duday back in, if we get players like Talia back in, if we can get a, a solid back line, uh, then I think we can actually... Our midfield's got to be, I think, reasonably good. And I think we've got enough, enough mix that we can get a reasonable forward line. So um, we're not going to be mugs. I, I don't expect us to get slaughtered by 20, 30 goals, but there's going to be games that we... Uh, think we should have won and we won't agree what's your final thoughts nick yeah it's just managing your expectations i said in the chat it's actually going to be really good for us that we we're going to be able to compete in the yes nfl because i think that's what held us back a little bit last year even though yes there were those little internal trial games it's wasn't at the level of that competition of what we get out of the yes nfl uh, uni is a bit of a loss um, out of that team because he did some great work with them, but I think that's a positive for us. It's just managing our expectations. I really do like the look of uh, Borlais down back. He just looks such a good size naturally already. Agree. Big and, kicker, I agree, Nikki. And that's our big problem we've got is our defence. Um, Worrell, I thought, also looked quite nice out of the back lines in the S N F L. Um, had some so, moments. Yeah, so he had some really nice moments. Got a really penetrating um, kick on him. Um, and so that's a, a really good advantage. I think that because the defence is our problem, as long as we can get that midfield mix right with a lot more youth going through there and we've got some really nice sized players um, and just get that blend right, they've got to do the bulk of the work because that's where we fell down last year was them not working hard enough. That's all I want to see. And then our results or the positives for the forward line will come. Yeah. I don't think uh, results are going to matter a terrible amount except for teams around our level, of course. Um, yeah. I, I really want to see some development. There's, there's a few players like Worrell, etc., that we haven't really talked about yet. We haven't really touched on ball ace, but we can touch on them next week. Um, I think uh, overall, though, uh, I just want to see Matthew Nix's st game style come into action. And uh, I just want to see yep. the young lads that we've talked about given opportunities and it may mean that some of our senior players are a little bit selfless. Um, Sloan, Tex, those sort of blokes, maybe they just need to put their hand up and step aside, maybe only positionally or maybe as first 22. But I think we really need to, to see that happen. All right. Well, it's been a fun-filled first uh, pancake. <laughs> for... <laughs> An hour and a half. Yep, and uh, you know, technical if the glitches and if the boys out, if the boys out there think you know we we're a very good team and we won't have technical issues. You got you're in the wrong you're in the wrong. Track. <laughs> that, that's right. You're following the wrong podcast. That, that's it. Yeah. That's it. But it is the preseason, so of our, um, part of our charm. That is exactly is. right. Uh, for those listening on the stream, I will consolidate uh, the video and put it up. Um, and also, <laughs> I'll make sure that the audio gets put onto Spreaker so that you can listen to it on demand through any of your podcasting platforms. Thank you to everyone who has uh, hooked in tonight. It's been great to be back. Um, and uh, we will be back again next week with another Procast. Good night, all. Yeah, good night, all. Night.